Hey, it's Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and welcome to the Black Belt Leadership Podcast, where each week I'm giving you tips, tools, insights, and resources to help you become a better version of who you are and what you do as you discover, develop, and deploy your own Black Belt Leader within. Hey, this week I want to ask the question, who's your cam? Now, you may say, John, who in the world is Cam? Well, you're going to find out as we jump into this week's personal growth and development insight. Now, I was a bit nervous about a recent trip I had to make to Tampa and St. Petersburg. Now, if you're not familiar with Tampa Bay and St. Petersburg, they're right in the heart of Western Florida, exactly where we saw the recent Hurricane Milton strike. You know, given the recent storms that had devastated parts of Florida as well as the eastern seaboard, I was a little bit concerned about what I was going to find when I got there. So much so, I even delayed my trip by a couple of weeks to give the individuals I was going to be teaching and training at that event time to deal with any issues that they had as a result of the hurricane. Now, what was I doing? I was going down there to spend two days training a financial services organization with two locations, one in Tampa, one in St. Pete. We were going to do some sales training, some human behavior training, and identifying some opportunities for them that they were perhaps overlooking in the marketplace. Well, like many of you, I had watched as Hurricane Milton struck Florida, and we all saw what happened. 19 tornadoes were spawned as a result of that hurricane hitting and setting over the state for a period of time. We saw massive wind. We saw massive flooding. And what was the end result? Millions of people, millions of Floridians without power for days. Hundreds of homes damaged or destroyed from the wind and the rain. Roadways and bridges were damaged, some destroyed, some completely wiped out, and multiple fatalities were once again reported. So as we began our final descent into Tampa International, I leaned out the window of my plane and began to observe to see if I could see the damage done by Milton as it came through. Now, you could see a few areas where the damage was quite evident, but much of the city looked the same as it always had. That made me relax. I picked up my rental car and have an opportunity to leave the airport and drive the Long Bay Bridge all the way to St. Petersburg. Now, as I'm pulling into St. Petersburg, one of the things I saw as I finished crossing the bridge and turned left to go into St. Petersburg was the roofless Tropicana Field, a reminder of the power and intensity of that storm. Well, I pulled into the hotel not knowing what I would find there, and it was virtually unscathed and did my last-minute preparations, grabbed a quick bite to eat, and got up Tuesday morning, got prepared and dressed and ready to go to do the training I had been tasked to do by this organization. Well, I drove downtown to what is one of the most beautiful downtown areas in the Southeast, and I had a little bit of time before I actually had to be at this training session that happened after lunch. So what do you do when you're in St. Petersburg and you've got some time on your hands? You go visit Pier Park. So I drove to Pier Park, parked my car, paid my little fee, and got out and thought, well, I can get in a quick walk. I can take in the bay, and while I'm there, I can grab a bite of lunch. So I got my steps in, walking up and down the pier and observing the the beautiful flora and fauna that is part of the amazing Florida landscape. But as I'm going up and down Pier Park, I kept walking by Doc Ford's Rum and Bar Grill. Now, every time I would go by, something interesting was happening. Once I went by and there were a number of squirrels that were scampering up and down the palm trees and running across a little grassy area just to the left of the restaurant. So I stopped and took some pictures and sent them to my kids and my wife just to say, hey, I'm in Florida having a bit of fun before I have to train. I walked over to the bay and looked out in the bay and there were brown pelicans floating in the water and occasionally plucking some fish that swam by and feeding themselves. But every time I would pass by Doc Ford's, the aroma of grilled burgers and chicken was floating through the air. The wind coming off the bay everywhere I went seemed to push that aroma right towards my nostrils. To me, it was kind of a not so subtle hint. Hey, dude, you need to come here and eat some lunch. So what did I do? I finally gave in to the smells I was smelling and I walked in after a couple of two or three do I don't eyes. I walked in to Doc Ford's. The waitress seated me at a window table near the bay where I could look at and observe this beautiful seaport area. And a few minutes later, a young man named Cam, my waiter, approached. The first thing he asked if I'd like something to drink. I told him I wanted an Alma Palmer. I knew it was going to be a good experience when he looked at me and he says, well, sir, would you like that Alma Palmer with sweet tea or unsweet tea? 
Well, I looked at Cam and I kind of smiled and I said, Cam, to me, I'm not sure you can make a real Arnold Palmer if it doesn't include sweet tea. To me, that's an Arnold Palmer, sweet tea and sweet lemonade mixed together. I got the thumbs up from Cam and a few minutes later, he returned with a big glass with an Arnold Palmer. I took a swig, gave him a thumbs up to let him know it was mixed just perfectly. So I set my drink down and picked up the menu to give Cam my order. And I noticed he would look at me and then he would look at my shirt. Now I was wearing one of my black belt leadership shirts at the time. And it says black belt leadership. And then there's kanji underneath it that says black belt leadership in Japanese. So after taking my food order, he turned to walk away. And then he stopped and he said, sir, are you a martial arts instructor? And I smile because when I wear that shirt, I'm often asked because people see the kanji and they immediately relate the kanji to martial arts. I said, well, I have been an instructor. I am a black belt in multiple disciplines, but let me tell you what I do and why I'm here. So I shared with him my background, the books I've written, the training I do, and why I'd come to St. Pete and the organization that I was working with and who I was going to be helping while I was there that day. And Cam's smile grew even bigger. After he entered my order with the kitchen, he came back with a book under his arm. The book was entitled Extreme Ownership. He held the book up and he said, sir, have you read this book? Now, I'd seen the book Extreme Ownership. And if you don't know the book, Extreme Ownership is written by Jocko Willink. Jocko Willink is a former Navy SEAL. And this book is an incredible read. I'd had a couple of people recently encourage me to get a copy of this book to read. And I'd actually put that on my wish list on Amazon. And I've got it ordered. It'll be here in a few days. So I can add that to my list of recommended reading that I'm going to be sharing out. So I said, Cam, I haven't ordered the book yet, but I'm going to. Tell me about the book. So Cam began to tell me some excerpts and some little pearls of wisdom that he was gleaning from reading this incredible text. Moreover, Cam went to tell me that what he was learning, he was sharing with his coworkers. And I looked around at the group of young men and young women in the room, and I thought, this is a young man that's committed to personal growth and professional development. And I asked him if that was the case. He said, yes, sir. He said, I am passionate about personal growth, and I want to become the very best version of me that I can. Well, think about who he just said that to. He just said that to the black belt leader. So do you think in that moment, I'm going to take an opportunity to lean in and hopefully have an opportunity to share a pearl of wisdom with him? So I shared a couple of excerpts and some things that I thought would be beneficial from some of the books I was reading. And I was talking about Revenge of the Tipping Point. I was That's Malcolm Gladwell. I was talking about Positive Leadership by John Gordon. And I was telling him what I was learning from those books and a conversation began to develop it. Cam would go work on with his other clients and he would work with the other patrons at their tables, but he would always circle back to ask me another question. And all the time my food was cooking, I think Cam made four or five visits back to my table to ask another question to let me know my food was almost ready. Now I observed as he would come back and forth his mannerisms and how he treated his other clients because I didn't want the other clients to be slighted or ignored because he was there talking to me and they weren't. Matter of fact, he did so good at his job, I pointed that out to his manager walking out the door. Everywhere he turned, he would go to his clients. He was engaging. He was welcoming. He was friendly. He was personable. He was very professional. And he made sure that their every need was met. He was valuing the patrons in the restaurant and looking for every opportunity to add value to them. Now, in one of the conversations when Cam came to me, I said, Cam, I said, what do you want to do down the road? Do you want to spend the rest of your life working in a restaurant? He said, no, sir. He said, I'm studying to get my insurance license. And when I get my insurance license, I want to be able to help people enjoy a more comfortable and financially secure future. Well, I smiled real big at that point. And I said, Cam, you won't believe this. I said, the organization I'm going to train today is a health insurance marketing organization right here in St. Pete. I told him who it was. He knew the organization. I said, let me give you the owner's name and phone number. And after you get your license, let me give you an opportunity to be introduced to him. So I gave him that information and Cam went to retrieve my food. And I texted the owner of this organization. I said, I've met a young man. His name is Cam and I've given him your information. He thanked me for that and said he'd more than be glad to have a conversation. 
So Cam dropped the food at my table and I shared with him that I'd passed his information on, which he was thankful. And he refilled my Arnold Palmer to make sure that my sweet tea and lemonade mix never went empty the entire time I was there. Uh, he would periodically come back. Mr. Terry, is there anything else I can get you? Always calling me by name. But every time he came back, I'd say, no, Cam, I'm fine. Thank you. And he said, well, do you mind if I ask another question? Well, of course, I said, no, Cam, while I'm here, feel free to ask me anything you want. I opened the door in the opportunity to have a coaching or a mentorship moment with a young man who is hungry for personal growth and development. Now, it was very apparent to me that Cam valued his job. And as I watched him interact with the other patrons in the restaurant, it was also obvious to me that he valued the people that walked in the door and he understood who it was that actually paid his check. It was the people that he served and served with distinction and created this exceptionally friendly, rewarding, fun-filled experience that made him want to come back. I watched as he interacted with the coworkers and you could see that he had good rapport with them as well. Well, we continued to talk as I ate my chicken sandwich and fries, and the food was great, by the way. Doc Ford's is a great restaurant. Highly encourage you to visit it if you're in the St. Pete area. Now, no plug, no money. Just want to put out that it's a great restaurant and uh, enjoyed it so much. I actually went back there and ate again that night. But as I'm wrapping up my meal, Cam followed up one last time to say, did I meet your needs today? Did I serve you well? And is there anything else I can do for you before you leave? I thanked him for his time. I thanked him for his exceptional service. And I said, Cam, I want to give you a tip. And I said, I want to give you a good tip because you've done an exceptional job today. But I wanted to also compliment you on what I've observed. And I began to share him from a leader's perspective what I saw in an individual who, to me, was a black belt leader in training. You know, I had the opportunity to give him my credit card. And, and as he left, I sat there and I thought about my decision to go to Doc Ford's for lunch. There were other restaurants in the area, but that restaurant, that opportunity, that decision for me created a chance encounter with a young man who is not only hungry to learn and grow and to become a better version of himself, but he was applying what he was learning and he was sharing it with his friends, his coworkers, so they too could learn. So I was grateful. I was really excited and grateful for that opportunity to meet this young man that I may never have an opportunity to meet again. I got a chance to meet Cam and to hear Cam's story. I got to witness his passion for personal growth. And as he was coming back with processing my payment and I was getting ready to sign, I made a choice, a conscious choice. I wanted to do something for Cam to help him continue his journey. So I signed my check. I included a nice tip as promised. And I said, Cam, would it be okay if I do something special for you because I want to help you in your journey for personal growth and development? He smiled even more and he said, well, sure, Mr. Terry, what would you like to do for me? Well, I told Cam, I said, Cam, if you'll do one thing for me, I'll do one thing for you. He said, well, what would you like me to do? I said, I want you to visit my website, blackbeltleadership.com. I want you to go to the contact area of that website and you'll find my email address there. And there's a contact me button that you can click on. I said, after I leave the restaurant, I want you to go there and I want you to send me your name and your mailing address. And Cam, what I'd like to do is I'd like to send you a signed copy of my book, Black Belt Leadership 101, as a thank you for you taking time to serve me well, but also share me your story of personal growth and development. Well, Cam's smile couldn't have been bigger at that point. And I said, oh, by the way, Cam, while you're there, you can subscribe to my podcast and there's several training videos there you may find valuable. And I pointed out where they were. Well, you would have think I'd have offered Cam a million dollars or had given him a gold ring or a gold nugget or something of significant value. He thanked me repeatedly, letting me know how much he appreciated the time that I had spent answering his questions and talking to him and sharing from my life experience about personal growth and leadership. This guy was hungry to learn to lead. He thanked me for coming in and he promised me, he said, Mr. Terry, I will make sure that I email you my address so you can send me that book. Well, here's what I can tell you that happened. I had no sooner gotten out the door and about halfway to the car when I felt my phone vibrate. I pulled it up and looked, and sure enough, I had gotten an email from Cam with his mailing address and a nice thank you note thanking me for coming in and, again, 
thanking me for the time I spent pouring into his life. Now, that to me was the end of a great day, but my day was just getting started because I was going from there to teach and train some other young men and young women how to recognize opportunities they were overlooking. But here's what I can tell you. As soon as I got home from Tampa a couple of days later, the first thing I did when I went in my office was I pulled out a copy of Black Belt Leadership 101. I personalized that book with a note for Cam and I signed that book. I put it in the mail and I sent that book to Cam to say, thank you for leading well. Here's an opportunity to keep growing. You know, I thought about that chance encounter on the way home, and I even shared that with a few guys that were on my row in the plane. I met some guys that were there for a golf tournament, and they saw that I was wearing uh, a Hall of Fame ring, and they asked me about my ring, and I was telling them about running the United States Martial Arts Hall of Fame and my experience in the martial arts and what I was doing now in leadership and personal growth and sales and incorporating these black belt principles and how I live my life and teach and train others, and it fascinated them. But out of that, I shared the cam encounter, and I challenged them to do something I want to challenge you to do is to look for those cam moments in your life and take advantage of them. Now, as I shared with them, I want to share with you, I believe that you and I, each and every one of us, have been put on this earth on purpose for a purpose, but it is up for you and I to make sure that we fulfill that purpose every single day. Now, my purpose that day, whether I realized it or not, was to be at Doc Ford's at 11 a.m. or shortly thereafter for lunch on a Tuesday morning to encourage a young man that was pursuing black belt excellence as he looked to discover, develop, and deploy his own black belt leader within. So here's my question to you. Who's your camp? You know, you and I have been put on this earth on purpose for a purpose. And if that's the case, that we've been put on earth on purpose for a purpose, then guess what? You and I have to be intentional about looking for those opportunities to live out that purpose every single day of our lives. So what created that opportunity for me? It was a logoed polo shirt that said Black Belt Leadership with kanji underneath it. That logo led to a conversation while I was eating an incredible chicken sandwich that helped me reaffirm a young man's belief in himself and encourage that young man to keep learning, keep growing, keep improving, and to challenge him to stretch and go farther than he thought he was capable of becoming. I had an opportunity to encourage Cam to discover, develop, and deploy his own black belt leader within to make a difference in the lives of others. So what does that mean? That means when you're in a restaurant, when you're being helped in a store, when you're standing in line next to somebody you don't know, that could be your Cam moment. That could be the opportunity for you to speak a word of encouragement, to speak a word of enlightenment, to share a word of affirmation, or to inspire someone who needs to hear what you have to say right now in this moment. You know, that simple conversation that you have with your cam could be the spark. It could be the catalyst that moves that individual from where they are right now to taking that first uncomfortable step towards where they truly want to be. And your word of encouragement, your affirmation, your inspiration, your word of motivation could be just what is needed for them to take that first scary, uncomfortable step in the unknown to get moving from status quo into exploring and experiencing their potential. You know, I believe that that conversation I had with Cam at Doc Jones not only affirmed in him that he's on the right track and that he's pursuing personal growth, but I believe that conversation with Cam also reignited a flame of encouragement and motivation underneath him to revisit getting that insurance license exam completed so he could go and pursue his journey of helping people enjoy a more comfortable, financially secure retirement. Now, for me, it was lunch, but it turned into more than lunch. It turned into a meaningful mentorship moment. And I was grateful as I left that restaurant and traveled around for the next two days in Tampa and St. Pete. I was grateful that I chose Doc Jones on a Tuesday morning, not only to have some great food, but an even greater conversation with a young man 
that I truly believe is going to go places and is going to change the lives. So here's my question again to you. Who's your camp? Who is that individual that's serving you at a restaurant, that's taking your coffee order at Starbucks or at Chick-fil-A or is assisting you in a department store or you're in a warehouse or you're somewhere in conversation with someone that that individual could benefit from your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience, and your expertise? Here's my question. Are you open to looking for those chance encounters and even setting up some intentional encounters with people you know that need to hear what you need to share that could lead to an insightful, inspiring conversation that's going to motivate and encourage some young man, some young woman, some older man, some older woman, some child, some adolescent is going to inspire someone to become a better version of themselves than they are right now. Now, for me, my day got even better because after my encounter with Cam, I traveled a few blocks to downtown St. Pete, a beautiful city, to spend the next three hours engaged in sales training, teaching sales strategies and human behavior insights to 26 hungry sales professionals in the room, men and women, all from different walks of life, but all there hungry to learn and to discover what they didn't know they needed to know to get better at their job. Well, here's what I can tell you. They were hungry to learn. And the more I talked, the more questions they asked, the more notes they took, the more follow-up questions they asked, the more they engaged in trying to not only learn what I was sharing, but how they were going to walk out of that room and practically apply it. When they got on the phone, when they got on a Zoom call, when they met with an individual face-to-face, -face, how are they going to take what they learned and apply it to become a better version of who they are and what they do and serve their clients and customers and prospective clients and customers at an even higher level? Now, after we finished that formal three-hour training, I hung around for a little while at the owner of the organization's request just to kind of interact with the team. And here's what I can tell you that happened. I had several more CAM moments with individuals in the room. Not all 26 were ready to engage at a higher level, but there were six, seven, maybe eight that were. And I ended up spending another hour and a half engaging with those individuals, answering their questions, pouring into their lives, and encouraging and challenging them to go deeper, to go farther, and to stretch themselves farther than maybe they believed they were capable of before they walked in the room that day. So here's what I can tell you as we get ready to wrap up today's training. There are CAM moments everywhere, and they could happen much more frequently in your life than they do. But for that to happen, it requires something of you. It requires that you and I, as black belt leaders, do two things. We've got to be open, and we've got to be sensitive to being aware of those moments when they reveal themselves. When those moments happen, we've got to pay attention to them. Now, for that to happen, what does that mean? It may mean that, like me, I had to eat a little bit slower at the restaurant so I could spend time with Cam. Maybe I needed to stay there a little longer than I planned, but it was worth it for the investment in that young man's life. Maybe it's taking a few more minutes at a coffee shop or taking a few minutes longer at a department store or interacting with the carpenter that came to do something at your house but is looking to learn and grow. Anytime you've got an opportunity to engage with an individual that wants to ask you a question that's going to lead to a conversation about personal growth and development, you got to be open and you got to be sensitive to those moments and you've got to be willing to be inconvenienced. Because when you're willing to be inconvenienced and get off of your routine and off of your schedule, these moments can and will happen anywhere and you're going to expand your reach and your influence in ways that you maybe haven't considered before. But I can tell you this, when you're willing to be inconvenienced, those CAM moments can and will happen, and when they do, they're amazing. Now, there is a reason CAM moments don't happen more often than they do. So let me leave you with this caveat as I begin to wrap up today's teaching. Oftentimes, those CAM moments are overlooked or ignored because we are so busy 
in our routines, doing what we do, being task oriented rather than people oriented, we are not making ourselves open and available for those cam moments to happen. When you and I get so focused on doing what needs to be done and checking off the boxes in our life, which are important, making sure we're moving the big rocks and moving forward towards becoming a better version of ourselves, it's also important to remember that we are human beings and we are put on this earth to be in relationship with other people. So we can't lose sight of those opportunities to be in relationship, sometimes with a complete stranger who wants and needs our help. It's an opportunity for us to be an encourager, a mentor, and a coach to someone in that moment that truly wants or truly needs what we have to offer. You know, as I was flying home, I thought about a comment I've heard Dr. John Maxwell say many, many times to me and to others, and that's this, walk slowly through the crowd. I understand that, and I understand what that means. It means being open and available to people. Because when we walk slowly through the crowd, when you and I are open, sensitive, and available to people, it gives people who want and need what we have to give them the time to connect with us, to engage with us, and to allow those amazing, inspiring, motivating, and uplifting CAM moments to happen. And when those moments do happen, not only does CAM walk away feeling encouraged, inspired, and challenged, guess what? We do too. CAM moments are everywhere. So be open and available to making the most of those moments when they reveal themselves to you. Hey, I'm Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and I want to say thank you for joining me for this Black Belt Leadership installment. I hope you found value in it, and I hope you'll take the opportunity today to look for a CAM moment in your life. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.